time, folks. Opening day, Yankee baseball. I'm super pumped. And, on top of that, WrestleMania is less than 11 days away. Mr. X, what do you say, my friend? What's going on? Hey, G-Punk. Glad to be back. Sorry I missed last week. You know, I do have a real job every now and again, <laughs> but this is my true passion. So, happy to be back. Opening day baseball. Lots of news in wrestling. And uh, ready, to, ready to take the show on. Yeah. Let's get going. Yeah, um, we're going to do top five teams that worked, that got thrown together and just really worked out. Um, Jay's, me and Jay pretty much combined our top five. Uh, There's only one that we disagreed on. You and who? Me, me and Mr. X decided uh, to um, throw out there our, uh, our top five combined because we pretty much had the same ones. We read off the list and we were like, all right, just the one, the one we didn't agree on. But otherwise, we got the top. These are our top five combined. G-Funk, X, Mr. X combined top five. Instead of separate. Yeah, and basically, like like you said, uh, G Funk, it's a matter of it's not teams that were blend, made to be put together. Like the British Bulldogs were a team, even though they had singles careers before being in the WWF, they were really brought up as a team. This list that we're doing is just two established talents that were put together, and the sum was greater than the individual parts. Yes, the, it, so, it, uh, these top five teams to me, like when you, when they got thrown together, like when we actually watched them get thrown together, you're like, ah, oh, this seems not ever going to work. Or you're like, oh, this must might be good. Like, you never knew when they threw random guys together. Like, guys who came up together are different. Like, they, they have such an instinct that there's they just know each other. Guys who come up as a tag team are a lot different than guys who come up as separate individuals. So, like I said, I think this top five definitely agrees with, like I said, we agreed on most of them. So, go ahead, start them off. Uh, number five is the Dream Team, Greg Valentine and Brutus Beefcake. I mean, this brings us back to the golden era of wrestling, the 1985, 1986 era where you had these larger-than-life cartoon character-like wrestlers. Mm. Valentine was a former Intercontinental Champion. Beefcake at the time did not hold any titles in the WWF, but they did go on to win the Tag Team Championship from Barry Windham and Mike Rotondo mm. in Philadelphia in August of 85 with the infamous cigar, luscious shiny V cigar that Beefcake put in Windham's face to end Windham and Rotondo's first title reign. Two distinct characters. One was the Hollywood kind of flashy character. Yeah. And the other one was the, the Matt Technician. Mm. Who only got better as the match went longer, right? The Hammer Valentine. So yeah. I, I put them in the top five. Yeah, I did. I said I agree. We I agree with you. Um, just I, I remember the, them having great tag team championships. One at one of the WrestleManias. I can't remember which one it was. You probably better when they fought um the British Bulldogs in the tag team championship. That was WrestleMania two, April seventh, nineteen eighty six. That's in it. Chicago. That's it. April. It, it, it was WrestleMania two. I thought it was WrestleMania three. No, WrestleMania three uh, was. Uh, Beef Kick and Valentine versus the Rougeau brothers. That's right. That's right. Okay. So, um, like I said, uh, that, those matches were, were made me love the Dream Team. I, I always loved Greg the Hammer. British Beef Kick grew on me after a while. Like, I wasn't really too a big fan of him at first, but I always loved the Hammer. Beef Kick wasn't a great wrestler. That was the thing. But he did have the charisma and the personality. He's very, very entertaining, to say the least. And being Hulk Hogan's best friend behind the scenes doesn't hurt either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, next on my list, I go with something a little more recent. Uh, Sheamus and Cesaro. I was pleasantly surprised. You know, the one thing I don't like that WWE does is they'll have these guys wrestle each other every week and then throw them together in a team. It's very common. It's a formula that we used. Yeah. Now, they did, they did the best of seven series, so we got sick of seeing them wrestle together. Then they put them as a team, and you, know, you thought this was going to be a couple-week storyline, mm. but it, it wasn't, and they turned out to be a really great team. Yeah. I like their music. I like their book. I like the jacket. The Bar. It's a great name, too. The Bar. That's a great name. Yeah, it really worked, and uh, yeah. it, I think it added to the life of Sheamus' career because he was kind of stale. Yeah, was, and, yeah. and Cesaro, I'll be honest, I expected bigger things from his career, and still had a long way to go. I was hoping after the win at WrestleMania 30, I guess the Battle Royal was 30. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When he won the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, I was hoping that he'd get that big singles push I know he deserves. Didn't happen yet, but it's not to say it won't, so, yeah. but I do really think they're clicking as a team. What I've noticed with, with, the, with the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, dude, Nothing. The only thing I think they should do, how they do the Royal Rumble, you win a shot at the WWE title, you, know, you get an automatic shot at WrestleMania. They should make the Andre yeah. Battle Royal mean something. Like at the next pay per view, you get to challenge a champion. Otherwise, they should do it the next night on Raw or SmackDown. Yeah, 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 or whatever, whatever they want to. But they got to make it more interesting. No one gives a shit because they're. What if those guys, the four guys who won the Battle Royal, what, what, what have they done in their careers? Nothing. Corbin was. What has Corbin done since he won? Nothing. They've buried him. You know, Big Show. Big they just gave the Big Show because they felt bad for him because he hasn't won a championship in like fucking ten years, and then. You know, Cesaro, who's already a champion a couple times, you know, so, and then who won last year? Oh, Mojo Raleigh. He's still a freaking mid card jobber tag team guy. So, like I said, I, 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 like I said, I don't really, you know. The, the, yeah, it doesn't do much, but I think you know, with, with Corbin, it was unexpected. It took this guy in his first match. Like, if they did something like this for a guy like uh, uh, Tommaso Ciampa or Johnny Gargano, that'd be pretty cool. Um, 
you know, uh, but the thing is to keep the push going. I yeah. Mean, you can't ignite the guy a little bit and then just back off. That's what they've been doing a lot. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't like. I don't really care for the 50-50 booking they call it. Yeah, yeah. All right, who's, who's the next team we uh, got? Next on the list is another team, and I thought I didn't see it working. I, I really don't even care about Kane. But you put Kane with Daniel Bryan, and you have some of the best segments in TV in the last ten years. The whole anger management thing was hysterical. Oh my god! When he graduated, it was hysterical. That was so and funny. It just worked, and I think it helped get Bryan over to the point yes. where he is today. I think if it wasn't for him teaming up with Kane, Daniel Bryan's career probably would have ended. Like, not ended, but it would have been kind of really on a downward swing. But that pro- that propelled him more. And once he got in the singles, once he went in the singles and he started tearing it up, they, they had to push him more. Hence, they started that whole rivalry with Triple H and the authority. He, 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 yeah. was the, he was eventually what you call the opposite Stone Cold Steve Austin in my book. <laughs> it, was, it, really, um, it really let his personality come through on TV. Yeah. It gave him the, that... That agility to do so, yeah. um, and the crowd, which was always behind him, because the guy can wrestle. I mean, there's no denying that. Yeah. But now you have this compelling character behind it. You get to know the person that he is. And he's just he's just a naturally likable person, almost almost like me. <laughs> um, now, number two, we had different ones, but uh, they're both they're both very similar. In my I, opinion. I didn't even th- I didn't even think about it. I, I, that one. I, I, that one completely caught me off guard when you said that one. I was like, oh man, I, I didn't so, even think about that. Hercules and Paul Roma, collectively known as Power, Power and Glory. Glory. That, that, this they team were, had did, the potential to just be one of the best tag teams ever. Did they ever win a tag work. belt? Never. No. Roma, uh, they, they worked at the program with the Rockers. Yeah. Um, that was the real mean storyline they ever had. They didn't really work much else after that. But Roma was always, you know, lower card. He was always a yeah. uh, preliminary talent. They gave him a little push, but they never pulled the trigger on him. No. Bearing stories why, some of it's backstage stuff, but Pat Patterson, you don't know what's true and what's not. Yeah, he, they're supposed he had some backstage heat, but whatever. Well, the, 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 the rumors are that Pat Patterson uh, solicited him. Yeah. Um, but it, again, just rumors, I have no idea. Yeah. I don't want to, I'm not, Mr. X is not looking for a lawsuit. Yeah. So, supposedly, that, that, that's what hurt their push, mm. but it just worked. I mean, that finishing move they had, if you remember, this is back in 1989, mm. 1990, when Hercules would give the Superplex. And the timing was so good for Roma to hit him with a splash right yeah. after he hit it. And just the outfit, the attitude, it just clicked. But they never really went anywhere with it. They had that and one big match with the Rockers at SummerSlam. And, and Slick, well, Mike, they, wasn't, Slick was, their, wasn't Slick their manager? Yeah, Slick was their manager. Yes, I knew he was. I wasn't sure. But did someone else manage him too, or just Slick? Who? Did someone else manage him besides Slick? I thought someone else managed him besides Slick. I only remember Slick, and I'm not sure if it was the entire time of their run. I do remember Slick with Roma. I don't remember. You know, now, now I'm second guessing myself. I don't know. <laughs> I know there wasn't anybody else. You probably, you probably better off guessing than I am. All right, what do we got for number but, one? You know, Hercules was managed early in his career by Bobby Heenan. That's right. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, and classic Freddie Blassie. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned, uh, go ahead, the team that you wanted. Yeah, my, my honorable mention was uh, the Colossal Connection, Andre and Haku. Um, that team I didn't see become, because they're both kind of big dudes. Well, Andre, of course, is the biggest ever, but Haku was a big, beefy guy, too. Um, you know, the big Samoan. Uh, he was one of my favorite, like, heel guys. I liked Haku. He was funny. Um, he beat the shit out of people, and he was crazy in real life. So, um, I thought that that was, you know, Bobby Heenan managing him, I thought it was a good, and they won the tag belts, so, um, a couple times. So, I think, uh, you know that that was a team that you'd expect to get thrown together like that and be so you know be so successful so so fast as they were. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, it, it was Andre's only singles title in the WWF. Mm-hmm. So this battle in his career almost reminds me of when they gave Piper the Intercontinental Championship. You had this guy who had this really long, mm-hmm. high prolific career and never won a title. And yeah. Andre didn't get the tag titles. It's funny. My son and I just watched WrestleMania six couple days ago, <laughs> and if you watch that match, Andre was really in bad shape. Yeah. He literally had his hand on Haku to walk down the aisle. Yeah, it was um, bad. Haku worked 95% of the match, hmm. and that would be Andre's last match at WrestleMania, yep. other than an appearance at 7, that was it. Yep, yep. Um, and my number one, I think this would be honest with everybody, you took Rockabilly mm-hmm. and put him with the Road Dog, yep. and you made the New Age Outlaws, and this team clicked on so many levels, yeah. and their personalities just gelled, and neither of them were phenomenal wrestlers. Yeah, they yeah. were average to a little above average. I, I think Billy but, uh, Billy Gunn's definitely a pretty good wrestler. Uh, Billy, Bro- I, I, I just think like, Billy Gunn is a, a sound wrestler. They call it a good hand. Yeah. But Billy Gunn couldn't have a good match on his own with a wrestler that wasn't as good as him, I don't think. Tell me the best Billy Gunn match you've ever seen. With Billy Gunn match? Probably when he wrestled The Rock. The one time. And I think it was, 19, yeah, it was on Raw. Yeah. It was Raw in 1990. They wrestled that pay-per-view. Yeah, but I remember that one, that one Raw they wrestled. They had a really good match. 
And uh, it wasn't a long match, but then it got interfered with the DX and everything, so it kind of was, you know. But up until that point, the match was really good. Um, yeah, that's when he won the King of the Ring that year. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. We were going to get behind him. Yep. But any, anyway, the New Age Outlaws, that personality, then linking with DX. And, you know, one of my favorite periods is just before they joined DX, and they were fighting themselves as a team. Mm. And they would wear these South Park shirts. This is in a Raw, like, 97. <laughs> yeah, I remember that's that. when Michael was in DX with Hunter, and it had these backstage segments where Shawn Michaels would interact with them and stuff. Yep. And it was crazy, because you never got to see the New Age Outlaws with Michaels in DX, you know? Yeah. But uh, it worked. Mm. Xbox joined them, Triple H joined them at China, and it was really one of the best matches of all time. Yeah. But the New Age Outlaws definitely were a team being expected take off like they did and, and when they to me they were most most underrated tag teams I agree yeah. I agree I mean and they had a pretty good run yeah they had a very good run um, much better than Chuck and Billy yeah <laughs> that's oh my god don't get me started on that tag team <laughs> um, yeah so uh, like I said I, I thought you know, we both had the same ones we, we talked before we're like alright we pronounced the same ones except for I forgot about Power and Glory that was the one I, I completely forgot and, and uh, Mr. X said yeah that, he's about and I said I had the classical connection which um, uh, funny, funny enough you know, Paul Roma to the gym I used to work out in East Rutherford, mm-hmm. and Jim Powers used to frequent it. Oh, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> pretty funny. That's funny. guy's still in great shape. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find the, f- the stupid uh, wrestling trivia questions I had. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm not finding them right now. It's very upsetting because I thought I had them saved. What are we doing, WrestleMania theme trivia? Yeah, that's what it is. Hold on, I just lost it. Oh, wait, what's this? Uh, how about I got this one? What, this is the quiz. Which WrestleMania did these legendary matches take place? Can you think you can handle that one? Let's try it. Okay, let's give it a whirl. It's loading right now. Hold on, here we go. Technology, folks, technology! Yeah! Alright, start the quiz. Here we go. Oh, this one's an easy one. I, I don't know if I should just skip it, because, you know, if I know it, then it's too easy. <laughs> um, when did, right. when did ha- Hogan versus Andre first happened? WrestleMania 3, Pontiac Silverdome. Yes, that is correct. Next question. Here we if go. this kind of information won't get you laid, I don't know what will. Okay. Did, when did Undertaker versus Michaels first happen? Undertaker versus Michaels? It yeah. wasn't at WrestleMania. Are you talking about the first WrestleMania match? Yeah, this is all WrestleMania related. Okay, so it was the WrestleMania in 2009, which would be, what, 25? 25 is correct. Yeah, it was, the day, it was actually, <clears throat> Michael's retired the day after my daughter was born. Yeah, the, was the last oh, day. really? That's crazy. Uh, no, um, yeah, these are, I, these are all... What, my what, of my life to wrestling. The, yeah, the, freaking, the, the quiz topic is, wh- when did these WrestleManias happen? Like, what? That's easy. Yeah. Um, when did Cena versus JBL happen? 23. Ooh, it's not one of the choices. Wait a minute. Oh, that's when he won the championship. Yeah. Uh, 20, he won the U.S. championship. It was 21. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it was only 19, 20, 21, 22 were the choices. Yeah, 20, he won the U.S. title at Mania at 20. Right? Yeah, at 20, he won the championship. This one's, okay. a, this one's a good question. Uh, I, I almost yeah. forgot. I almost got confused myself, but I just remembered. When did Roddy yeah, Piper... Michaels. When did, Roddy, when did Roddy Piper versus Mr. T happen? WrestleMania 2. It was a boxing match. Was yeah, there. yeah. That was that, For some reason, I'm keeping on saying WrestleMania 1. I'm like, no, it wasn't. No, one was the tag match. And then someone said it was WrestleMania 3. I'm like, no, it's WrestleMania I was 2. There, I was there, too. Yeah. When did Hogan vs. Warrior happen? That's Six. easy. Yeah, that's April easy. April 1st, 1990. That's, that's easy. Anna. See, the fact that you remember the dates is fucking creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm looking to remember my wife and my anniversary. I remember freaking WrestleMania. Creepy. How far have I fallen? Oh, my God. When did Edge vs. Undertaker happen? Uh, I was supposed to be at that one. It was uh, 24 in Orlando. Correct. Mr. X is fucking knocking him out. He's 100% so far. Yeah, where's my challenger? Where's, what's that guy's name? I, I, well, actually, the other quiz, I, I thought it might have been harder. Kneel before me. Kneel before Zod. <laughs> when did Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar happen? Oh, 19. One of my favorite ones. That was in yeah. Seattle. He's correct again, folks. He's on a roll. Um, this one's tough. I, you probably get this one because I don't, I don't know. I don't know the newer shit. I, I fell off until my son so, got See, I don't know if you know, Like, some of the older ones I can remember, but some of them I don't. And the newer ones I, I remember more than the older ones. Yeah, I when, don't, when, when, did, when did Ric Flair versus Randy Savage happen? Oh, come on. WrestleMania 8, Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm going to say April... It was April of, 90, uh, April of 92. I don't remember the day. Maybe yeah. April 6, 1992? He's on a roll, folks. That's when Flair did the angle where he was having an affair with Miss Elizabeth. Yes. Great. Yes. When did Jericho's versus Shawn Michaels happen? Nineteen. Nineteen, yeah, that was that's yeah, that card was fucking packed. That, that had a great wrestling yeah, card. Was, yeah, yeah, Jericho Michaels, Austin Rock, Lesnar Angle. Yeah, there's they a, even had a great uh, uh, six 
a three ta- three tag team match with Benoit and Rhino. Yeah, there, there's some good ma- there. Oh, they, tag team, that, that, really good WrestleMania. That was a really good WrestleMania. When did Brett versus Sean happen? Twelve. Twelve. The, I knew that the, one. The childhood dreams of a boy became the reality of a man. Yeah, the famous line. From, well, Vince said it, right? He was the one commentating that. Yeah. Shawn Michaels, my favorite wrestler of all time. When did Rock vs. Austin first happen? The first time? Yeah. 15. Philadelphia. Yeah. Yep, yep. I went to WrestleMania 14 the year before when he fought Shawn Michaels. Great WrestleMania. WrestleMania 14 was my... But I went to WrestleMania 10, too, and WrestleMania yeah. 11. I haven't been 14 was significant because it was Michael's last match for four years. I want to try to go next year, dude. This is going to be a MetLife. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to fucking have to refinance the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be a really freaking crazy expensive already. I got a friend that's got a... Um, tell his friend to hook up... Box. Tell his friend... Tell his friend to hook up the funk. Tell him to hook up the funk. Tell him to hook up the funk so we can get in and we do a show from fucking yeah. WrestleMania. That'd be awesome. <laughs> when did Savage vs. Steamboat happen? When did what? Savage vs. Steamboat happen. This one's easy. Savage and Steamboat? Yeah. If you don't know that, you're not a wrestling fan, so I don't even want to answer it. WrestleMania 3. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I, I was like, come on, they got to give them harder ones. Uh, oh, I don't remember this one. I, I might, wait, okay. i gotta, I got to think about this one. When did Ric Flair vs. The Undertaker happen? I can't remember that one. Wrestling, that was WrestleMania 17. That's when uh, Arn Anderson came in and hit an amazing spine buster on Taker. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I'm sorry. 17 was Helmsley on Undertaker. That was 18 on Undertaker and Flair. 18? Yeah. Hold on. It's not letting me pick it. What's going on? I'm pressing 18. Yeah, 17 was Helmsley and Taker. 18 was Flair and Taker. Okay, I don't know why this isn't working. I'm pressing 18 and it's not responding. Oh, that is correct. I'm more. Yeah. 100% so far. You haven't freaking missed one yet. Eh, just like college. <laughs> when did Triple H versus Michaels versus Benoit happen? 20. Yep. I remember that match. That match was awesome. Great match. I was a huge Benoit fan, so I really wanted him to win. Yeah, me too. Me too. I was sick of freaking Shawn Michaels and Triple H by that point. Not me. I, was I still love, I love, always loved, loved Shawn Michaels, but, but I was just getting sick of Triple H at that point. Oh, time for a change then, yeah, too. And yeah. At the time, you remember Helmsley was just dominating, so when, him tap out in the ring was a big deal then. When did Savage Hogan happen? I think that was five. Savage four. Hogan? Yeah. Yeah, five. I was five. there in Lake City. Actually, yeah, that was in... I actually almost went to that one. Something happened. My dad can get off work or something. I don't remember. We were going to go. I got a picture with Andre the... Oh, no, 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 it was the year before WrestleMania 4. I got a picture with Andre the Giant mm. when him putting his hand over my face. I just wish I could find it. When did Rock Cena first happen? Uh, so, so, see, this is one of the newer ones. I know it was... Uh, I'm going to say it was 28. Uh, 27 was the mid... It was, 20, it was 28. 28 is correct. The newer ones, I, 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 I lost touch of wrestling for a while. Until this, one's a, into it. this one's an easy one. When did uh, Bret Hart versus uh, Steve Austin happen? 13, great match. Yeah, that match was awesome, too. Um, I mean, this might be boring to the audience. Yeah, dude, I, I think but, we should kill it. But any, any <laughs> ladies that are impressed with my knowledge, please please do write in. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I'm stunned by him. Like, I, I, he, this guy's writing rat, off dates. I'm like, if I, can, I just remember the freaking match and what WrestleMania is. I can't remember the I freaking date. I can't the date and the location. I mean, the oldest shit I can The location. I'm lucky to remember where the hell I am right now, so. <laughs> Anyways, but. Uh, you want me to give you a couple quick questions, Chief Funk? Yeah, if you want. Like I said, I'm, your knowledge is way better than mine. I'll remember some, but I remember all of them. I mean, I like to make it a little more open ended. What was Ricky Steamboat's last WrestleMania appearance? Hmm. That's a, that's a good one. Um. I'm trying to think. Uh, you know what? Just tell me the match. I can't tell you the match. I can tell you what WrestleMania. I probably can't tell you the match who it was. Uh, Ricky Steamboat. Like once, once I get past '95, dude, my memory's freaking lucky if I remember. My... You're taking too long. I think you're googling it. No, I'm not googling nothing. Um, look at me. Either watching me live. Uh, no, I'm not. Um, is uh, I'm gonna say WrestleMania f- six. <laughs> nah, nah, I thought so. <laughs> uh, well, you're thinking old school. Last appearance was at WrestleMania four in the in the. Championship tournament for Greg yeah. Valentine. That's right. However, if you recall, he came back and wrestled that match with the three legends with Piper and Snooker versus Jericho. Oh, yeah. Trick that was, question, yeah. G-Punk. That was a good question, yeah. That trick was a trick. Question. You told me trick questions, man. Come on. What are you doing? I, mean, I didn't throw you any trick questions. <laughs> uh, name two opponents that Vince McMahon wrestled one on one at WrestleMania. Mm. One of them, Hogan? Yep, 19. And then the other one was. I want to say Stone Cold. Uh, they never wrestled one-on-one at WrestleMania. Oh, they didn't wrestle at WrestleMania? 
No, they must have seen Valentine's That's Day right. Massacre. Yeah. Was that it? Was, oh, oh, was that Wrestle? Who was the other one WrestleMania? Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. He did wrestle Shawn Michaels yeah. at WrestleMania? What yeah, remember the Spirit Squad? He interfered and they did some cool shit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What WrestleMania one was that? Uh, no, 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 I guess. 23 was Michaels and Cena. I think that had to be 22, because 21 was Michaels and Angle. The match that year was supposed to be Michaels and Eddie, but Eddie died. Yeah, 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 I heard that. It really sucks, because that's a match I always wanted. Oh, man, that'd been a fucking match for the ages, dude. never worked together one-on-one. I know. That's... Dude, if you can go back in time, there's so many matches I would love to to have, like, when these guys were in there. Like, I would have seen AJ Styles here 10 years ago, dude, and wrestling Shawn Michaels. Because that match would have been fucking... If you remember, I think it was last Royal Rumble, there was some promotional posters going out with AJ and Michaels on it. And Michaels is still in great shape. I mean, granted, he's fucking wonky-eyed now. He's 50 years old. still in great shape. I'm sure he can wrestle. So yeah, I, that's one of the matches I'd love to see. You know, something I, always wanted to see I would see Michael and Punk one on one. I'd always like to see. Like you said, don't, don't, this is like exactly like Undertaker Cena. I would not want to see it happen now, just because they're both the two legends are all old now. Like if it was in their prime, dude, when they still could go, yes. Now it's just a sad freaking just trying to make a dream match. Who, who are you talking about? Any, any kind, like The Undertaker, Cena, Shawn Michaels, yeah. AJ Styles. Like if you try to do that, like, as much as I don't want to see Cena and Undertaker fight, it's going to happen. But yeah, no. Cena, Cena, Cena can still have a really good match. Taker, I don't know what shape he's in now. That's what I'm saying. I know it's physically he looks good, but I don't know if it's from the surgery That's or something it. like that. Uh, but Undertaker, as recent as two years ago, three years ago, was having good matches. I mean, his matches were Helmsley, WrestleMania were great. Yeah, like I said, he, he I'm just saying, he, he looked horrible last year against Roman Reigns. So, oh, last year he looked bad, and the year inverse Brock, he looked bad too, and yeah. he didn't do much against Bray. Yeah. But last year, yeah, he, 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 he looked injured. He looked hurt. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a good match. The fact that they put that on last, he was shit all over it. Yeah, it was, it was, it was bad. And like I said, I couldn't, like, if he comes back, he's got to come back as American Badass. Because I'm assuming, to me, the dead man gimmick is done. He, he buried it, he freaking folded it up, put it away. Like yeah, I, said, I know you're passionate about that. I yeah. agree. But Listen, if, let me give you one more question. Yeah. I'm pretty confident you're not going to get this one, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Great. I think I actually said it on the show before. Okay. But tell me the only wrestler that competed in a match at WrestleMania 1 and 10. 1 and 10? Yeah. That's not Hogan. No, it's not. It's not Savage. Nope. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Not Savage, it's not Ten, Hogan. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Brutus Beefcake. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Beefcake like Hogan, he was out by nine. Oh. His nine was his last one. But this is a tough one. The answer? Leilani Kai. No way. WrestleMania 1 versus Wendy Richter, WrestleMania 10 versus the Lunder Blaze. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a tough question. That is weird. So, uh, I can sit here all day and dominate. Any questions? Any uh, emails or anything? Yeah, I got some emails here. You don't got any cool. on your end? No, I got spam and somebody. Listen, if people, if you're going to send voice messages, yeah. they can't be more than two minutes long because the size of the file gets too big for my email account. Yeah. So okay. try to keep it under two minutes. I think two and a half minutes is the max. I never tested it. Yeah, I think it's like two and a half. We, we've had some that were like two minutes. So, you know, we, we encourage it. I, I, I prefer the voice messages because it adds a little more interaction on the show. Yeah. And you don't you're, get to hear my live. voice and your voice. Yeah. Um, only first question I got here is from our good old friend John. Mr. John Wynn asks a few random questions. What made you happy today? That's freaking opening day for the Yankees, and I'm freaking t- yeah. tickled pink mother effer. What is something that oh, you yeah. discovered before it was liked by the majority of or mainstream? Wait, say that again, sir. What, I, fuck. what is something that you discovered before it was liked by the majority or mainstream? Oh, I got an answer for that. My answer is nine inch nails. Oh. I knew them before they were anything. No, nothing. I can't think of anything. Um, what is something you pretend to understand but you really don't? Politics. <laughs> Uh, me, it's women. Uh, well, that's that's the that's just every man's answer. So <laughs> that, that's just this is a common answer. You, that's the first thing you could say. But otherwise, uh, what is the best song to have sex to? Um, Humping Around by Bobby Brown. <laughs> I'm gonna say Closer by Nine Inch Nails. Oh. What five matches do you want to see Daniel Bryan in now that he's back? Oh, and, mo- and by the way, he's one of the most overrated wrestlers in the history. Jerry Funk. Well, he <laughs> breaks our balls about that. Yeah. Um, Oh man, this is so many. I want to see him fight AJ definitely, Nakamura, Finn Balor, Miz. Rollins, Owens, there's so Dude, many. There's, you can have a slew of matches with him. I, I'm so, the fact that he's back and he's in, he's still in the prime of his career. He, he's definitely gonna bring Bobby some, Roode. Bobby there's Roode. so many guys. There's, dude, I can't wait for Johnny Gargano to come. Ah, oh, Johnny Gargano comes up and fights him. Yeah, dude. That, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that Gargano is the mystery tagging partner or is in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal wins that. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. 
but I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> um, well, let's see. Right, his, right, his wife just got home. All right, continue with the questions. Okay. Uh -oh. how, would you, how would your wife describe you in five words? Nope. Fucking crazy Irish idiot. <laughs> Actually, that's only four. But uh, four. <laughs> and and uh, unable to get numbers. <laughs> what can we do? Uh, can I answer that question? What was that? Oh, yeah, go ahead. For me, it's very, 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 very large heart. <laughs> what can we do to tackle illiteracy in adults? Make, <laughs> make kids stay in school. <laughs> Keep sending us emails. What? Oh, yeah, I know. Um, do you th what do you think about illiteracy in adults? What do I think about it? Yeah. I, I don't think about it. <laughs> do you think dogs mind when we fart? I mind when they fucking fart, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> ever, These are funny. Ever walk in on, on or hear your parents having sex? Unfortunately, yes, and I was very young and it was they crap oh, me for a while. Really? Oh my god, dude, it was horrifying. I was like maybe <sighs> five. Wait, or tell six. the story. Tell oh, the story. I, don't, I don't want to tell the story. I was about five or six. That's all I remember. Oh. I was, like I said, it was so, such a long, if it was like more recent, I probably could remember, but that was so long ago. I just, just, not so much seeing, but just hearing. <laughs> My parents never slept in the same bedroom since I, since I remember, and then I got divorced, so. Well, there you go. Never in the court for me. What is something you are infamously known for? The show. <laughs> um, My wrestling trivia knowledge. Yes, there you go. Not, not, not mine, his. What are your top three dream matches that never happened? We talked about this a minute ago. Um, <clears throat> Michael's and AJ's on there. Michael's and The Rock is on there for me. Mm -hmm, me too. Punk and AJ in a WWE ring for me. Um, I think number one for me is going to be Michael's and The Rock. Done. It's the match I always wanted to see that just never got together. The match I really wanted to see that never happened? Hogan Austin. Yeah, that's a big one too. It could have been an that's, 18. That was the one I was dying to see. And it didn't ever yeah. happen. But. Good call. If you look to look like anyone, who would it be? Oh my God. If I, if like anyone, if I could look like anyone, who would it be? Oh my God. There's so many good looking dudes out there. <laughs> um, I don't know. Mm, what about you, Mr. X? Who, who, who would you be? Um, probably Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> okay, I'm going. I'm going. Uh, I'm going. Uh, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> um, no, I don't know, man. That's. The, I'd probably say. Uh, what, what's that um, guy's name from? Uh, oh my God, I can't remember his name. Um, from that stupid show with. Uh, uh, Oh, man, I'm, I'm drawing a blank with the show now. From Baywatch, what was that guy's? I don't look like Hassel, Hasselhoff. Has, Hasselhoff. That's who you want to look like? Yes. But in his prime, not now. <laughs> when he was freaking Knight Rider. When everyone wanted to bang him. I don't think, in, in a million years, if you said here's a million guesses who you're going to pick, I would never think to give him Hasselhoff. <laughs> hey, man, the Hoff was the shit back in the day. He's very big in, like, Eastern Europe. Yeah, I'm saying, so you can go to Europe and get laid anytime he wants. If you can look like... Oh, I just did that one. I know it's a lot, but I love when you Mr. X answer. Please t oh, Okay, thanks. Um, can you s please say, on the show, there are a few days left in the month of March for the G-Funk special at Frank's Used Tires on 14241 on Main Street in Houston. Just come in and say G-Funk three times to Clankwa or Javon at our desk. Service to receive 10% all tire rotations and oil changes now through the end of the month. Well, there you go. You got to say G-Funk three times. <laughs> yeah, G-Funk three times. Uh, I guess it's... 10% off? Yeah, 10% off, man. It's a deal for tires. I wish I had a place in Jersey. I need, I need to use a discount. Next one is from Steve Kinsey. Hey, Jerry and Mr. X. Thanks for reading my email. I was recently hospitalized with a staph infection and discovered your shows. I hope you're doing well, man. I hope to speedy recovery. I watch almost all of them. I like you. I'm interested in communications. I'm currently involved in local radio station at my school. With a level of... I can't say it again. She said, he says, I like you. I'm interested in communications, and I'm currently involved in a local station at my school. With the level of success you achieved and experience you have, let me ask the following. What do you think the future of entertainment is as far as the medium people will use? For example, television is dying medium, as most people under 16 use their devices as opposed to their TV. That I can agree with. But, I have, dude, I have no experience. Like I said, if, I was, if I can go back in time and do what you're doing now, I'd be probably doing this for money for real instead of just doing it live for no money and just having fun with my friend. So. Wait, you, you, you don't get paid for this? No, I don't. I check. <laughs> oh, you got yours? Because then I'm missing mine. I'm missing a bunch of them. Um, why don't you have a Twitter account? Because I had a Twitter account, and I got hacked. I have two Twitter accounts, and they both got hacked, so fuck Twitter. We might make a show Twitter account, so stay tuned. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, if, I, if I handle it, it's going to get hacked, so I'll, I might let Mr. Yeah. X handle it. Your, yeah, channels, it your channel's advertising are so limited. Maybe you want to hire me to under, undertake your promotion. 
Dude, like I said, if I was getting paid, you'd be getting paid. But guess what? Nobody getting paid. Um, Wait, you know what? Tell him to send his resume. I'll look at it. Send his resume to Mr. X. Uh, Russell Talk. Yeah. I mean, writing the same poorly written paragraph repeatedly on your Facebook page for a limited universe to see how you, know, you grow a fan base. Do you consider me? I come cheap. Do you get, will you do it for free? <laughs> and eventually, if I get, if I make it, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll definitely uh, pay you. Up until this point, what has been the highlight and low light of your entertainment career? You're looking at it. All in one. All in one. Were you the guy in high school that everybody was really was really funny always, and that ha and that's how it transitioned to an entertainment career? I literally laugh out loud while watching. I wasn't the funniest guy in school, but I did tend to crack a joke. I'm more sarcastic with the one-liners more than anything when I was in high school. Not so much now. When you get old, you start you lose your little bit of wit. I still got some, but it's it's, it's slowly fading. Um, Mr. X is just riding my, my coattails for now until we figure something out. Well, yeah, I've always relied on my boyish good looks. <laughs> there you go. Um, let me offer some constructive criticism. I love your show and think you guys are riots, but you have to do the following. Slow the fuck down. Both of you, especially G-Funk, mumble and talk so fast. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree, too. I, realize, I, I don't even realize I'm doing it. It's just the way I talk. When you're answering people's questions, please read the entire question loudly and slowly. It's not enjoyable when you read half of it in your head and the mumble of the other half. I know I do that sometimes. I, right. I, call, I call myself on some shows watching back as, man, I just no, mumble that whole lot. Yeah, you're, you're definitely you're catching all my shit, dude. Sometimes you'll even stop mid-sentence and say hi to a buddy that joins the broadcast. Yeah, man, I don't mean to do that. Sometimes I just, especially if someone I haven't seen before, I get excited. I, I think you should see this bit because it isn't, it isn't easy to follow. More callers, it diversifies the show. So you can't do calls, and I don't have a setup for call, taking calls, which if I did, I'd be taking calls. But that's why we like to do the... Um, yeah, we might work on some with that, too. We yeah. can get a, um, a burner line. Yeah. Again, the show is awesome. I think you're naturally funny, guys. Please just try to improve on, on the above. A few other show-related questions. Who was your dream guest to interview? Oh, my God. And anyone. Anyone, dude. <laughs> anyone famous. Like I said, I, if I can get Michael Rappaport on here, I'll be happy. He's a picking shit. But I haven't heard from anything. Oh, anything new with that or no? No. Mike, you're out there, man. What's going on, brother? Plug my show. I'm plugging yours. Mike Rappaport. Follow him. And tons of uh, and tons of uh, media outlets on everything. Um, are you under any sort of deal or business agreement? No. <laughs> if so, do you both have agents? No. <laughs> and now three wrestling questions for you since Rick Martel is my favorite wrestler. Okay. Let's go. Um, what was Rick Martel's first WrestleMania and what was the match and result? I know it. Go ahead, I know. <laughs> it was uh, WrestleMania 3. It was the Can Am Connection versus Bob Orton and uh, Magnificent Morocco. Good call, good call. Can Am Connection 1. First match. I don't, I don't remember that one for shit. Um, what was the stipulation of the Martel vs. Shawn Michaels match at SummerSlam 1992? You know that one? I know it. I have no idea. They couldn't punch each other in the face. Oh, yeah, I remember that now. <laughs> remember Sherry Martel fainted? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Who was Rick wrestling in WCW when he suffered the injury that would end his career? Oh, this is a good one. So, so in, do you know the answer before I... I don't even know. He didn't write an answer. So, so interestingly enough, over the weekend I got to meet Booker T. And Booker T initially hurt mm -hmm. Rick Martel in a match on Nitro. Uh -huh. Martel rehabbed the injury, came back like seven months later in his first match against Stevie Ray, and he suffered injury at the hand of Stevie Ray that ended his career. Oh, wow. Funny enough, I spoke with Booker T about this. Yeah, he um, he doesn't have the answer here, so I don't know. But um, yeah, you, no, you, you're probably yeah, all right because he has no answers here. You're probably all right. Uh, Steve, no I, I don't know. Mr. So should, Mr. X probably probably definitely got him all right because I don't know shit. Once it comes to probably, other matches, definitely. you heard it here first. He says, "Keep up the good work, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Keep them coming, man. Keep watching. Spread the word. Do we do we got to do to help this play. show? So if you you can work for us someday. <laughs> and that, yeah, that's all the emails I got. You got no other emails? Where no, no I, I only got the one that I couldn't open. Oh, that sucks. Oh, well, Matt, what are you going to do? But, folks... Well, uh, um, we're drinking. The Yankees are on in two hours. Yay! That's the only thing that's making me happy right now. But, um, otherwise, folks, we will do... I don't know if we're going to do topics. WrestleMania's right around the corner. Um, we're definitely going to do a, a WrestleMania prediction show. Um, like I said, we still might squeeze another show in before then. One or two. Like I said, what's today's date? Oh, yeah. Oh, we still got a couple of weeks. So, yeah, probably squeezing a couple more shows before that, uh, before we do the prediction show. Um, but like I said, keep sending questions, comments, and emails to WrestleTalk2018 at Yahoo.com or JerryGMan2376 at Yahoo.com. 
and follow me on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe at G Funk Rant. Folks, until next time, have a glorious, have a glorious fucking day. Opening day MLB. Let's go Yankees. We're out.